Hello everyone, my name is Sean Levick from the Geospatial Ecology and Remote Sensing Lab. This is our environmental monitoring and modeling course and today we're moving on to lab four, exploring land surface temperature trends over time. The objective of this lab is to dig a bit deeper into exploring climate variables with Google Earth Engine. By the end of the lab, you will be able to explore long-term trends in temperature data for specific regions of interest. Just a reminder that you can find this lab at www.geospatialecology.com and we're working in the environmental monitoring and modeling section. I'd like to acknowledge the inputs of the Google Earth Engine team as well as the International Research Institute for Climate and Society at Columbia University. Now, we have the ability through a couple of Earth observation satellites to estimate land surface temperature. To do this, we need to rely on the thermal infrared bands. And one of the longest running options for us is the MODIS satellite. MODIS has a lot of data products held within the Google Earth Engine catalog. And for today's lab, we'll be using the Mod 11 A2 version 6 product. This provides an average 8-day land surface temperature, which we refer to as LST. And each value <coughs> in the image is a simple av average of all the corresponding pixels collected within that 8-day period. Now we're going to start our lab by defining a region of interest. So we'll move over to code.earthengine.google.com and for today's lab we're going to work down in New South Wales and we can type in here the region around Tamworth, New South Wales, Australia. Um, we can zoom a little bit further out and we'll start by defining an ROI we can draw a big block which covers a bit of the coastal um, ranges and more inland areas. We're going to rename that ROI, meaning region of interest. Okay, now I said that we'd be using the MODIS 11A2. Let's just see what that actually is. So if we type MOD 11A2 in here, you'll see that we have number of different rasters and this is the one we want to use mod 11 a2 version 6 and that's from the, the Terra satellite um, that the Terra platform on motors um, and if we look down through this little info sheet we can see information on the bands that are held within this data set and the very first band is the one that we're after LST day at one kilometer scale. So that means it's the daytime, the day land surface temperature. If you go a little bit further down here, you'll see that we also have a band with the night land surface temperature. It's important to note that these units are in Kelvin, and this is the min and the max, and there's a scale of 0 0.02 already applied. Um, We'll come to this, but if we want to work in degrees Celsius, we're going to need to transform this data. Now remember, we can click the blue button to import the image collection, but the important thing is that we know the image collection ID. Once we know that, we can import that in a script with a bit of code. So we'll just copy these few lines of code here and paste them in line one. So we're importing the image collection, we're creating a variable called modus and that's referencing this particular image collection. We can hit run just to make sure that we don't have any errors. The nice thing about doing it this way rather than importing it up here is that it takes out that step, that manual step of point and clicking and if you're transferring scripts to other people they know exactly which catalog you're working with. Now we're going to specify our dates of interest. So I'll copy the next step and paste it in. 
So we get defining here a start date. We're making a variable called start, and that's going to be the starting date. And I've set this here to 1st of January 2015. And slightly differently to how we've worked with dates before, defining a date range. So this variable date range equals earth engine date range start. And then we look at the syntax here. We're going to use start.advance one year. So if we are only wanting to explore the trend over one year, this, this will work very well. We can, of course, change this around. We could make that five years. For example, we could also increment in months or weeks if we wanted to. Um, we're going to leave that as one year for now. And then our next step will be to filter the land surface collection, only including images from the date range. So now we've specified the starting date and the date range. And we're creating a variable now called modus lst day and that's going to equal this modus collection but we're filtering by the date range and we're selecting only the lst day one kilometer band so we're pulling out just the band with the temperature data we'll hit run and that'll run in the background now i mentioned previously that the temperature is in degrees Kelvin and we want to convert to Celsius. To do that we're going to use a, a function. We're going to create a variable called mod C, MODC, which will equal the modus land surface day temperature, but we're going to map a function over it. And that function is going to multiply by 0 0.02, which is the scale factor, and subtract 273.15 for the conversion from Kelvin to Celsius. Um, so we're making a new image with the converted temperature data. But importantly, because we want to plot this through time, we need to know the date that that image was collected. So we're going to copy properties. We're going to copy the metadata properties associated with the original image. And the property we want to copy is the system time start. So that's the, the, the starting time of the image. So we'll copy that, paste it here. We'll run just to check we don't have any errors. And then we'll move on to the last piece of code. Um, sorry, the second last piece, which is to chart our time series. We'll copy this in, paste it in here. So we're going to chart the time series. We'll create a variable called temperature trend, and we're going to use the user interface chart image series um, command. We're going to call the image collection mod C. Remember that comes from up here. Um, we're going to use an area of interest, which is our ROI. And within that ROI, we're going to reduce the data with um, the, the median statistic. The scale matches um, the pixel size. And then there's a few options in here. So we're specifying the line width and a point size for the chart. And in this particular um, chart we're including a, a trend line. So I can hit run and in the console if everything's working you should see the wheel and we generate a chart. We'll make that just a little bit bigger. Here you see we have our land surface temperature time series in degrees Celsius on the y-axis with our dates along the x-axis. The actual dots represent the data points um, there's a line joining them together, and we've specified the sizes of those over here. And there is also a linear trend line fitted showing the average, um, effectively the average temperature over that year. Now we can see the temporal, uh, the seasonal trend with it being warmer in the, in the summer months, cooler 
in the middle of the year. Now, that's great. Um, what we might want to do though is expand that date range out. Now, we can go back to 2010, for example, and then say advance eight years. So that's up here where we define the starting um, date range, the starting date and the range. So just to clarify that, I've changed the starting date to 2010 and I'm advancing eight years. Now when I click run, it will take a little bit longer. So it's now querying eight years of data instead of um, just the one. And now we'll get that plot over time. Um, if you don't want the, the trend line on, you can just change that zero there to a one and hit run and then it won't print the, the trend line. Um, if you want it back, just change that to a zero. Remember that this is just uh, fitting a linear regression, so it's possibly not the, the most meaningful way for looking at change over time, but it can give you a, a quick indicator on if uh, temperature is generally increasing. If we want to look at a, the chart slightly larger, we can open that button and then we'll see in slightly more more detail um, the land surface temperature over that time and at least over the scale we can see that it does appear to be increasing over time also if you look at the distribution of the the maximum um, averages over the time period as well as the minimum there's an increasing trend we can download this as a CSV file to work with in R, for example, you can also export it as an image. Um, I'm going to go back and I'm going to really go back as long as we can. Let's go all the way back to 2000 and advance 18 years. Hit run. Eighteen years of data to ingest now. Um, while that's happening, I'll zoom out a bit. So there's our our data for the full eighteen years. Um, I'm just going to turn off the trend line. I'm going to make this block a little bit smaller and move it a little bit further south and rerun this. So this is just showing the flexibility. You can easily adjust the, the look and feel of the chart. You can resize your area of interest. You can move it to new locations, um, uh, which is quite, quite a powerful way of looking at land surface temperature trends over time. However, we might also want to plot out uh, temperature spatially. And that's the last bit of code we have here so that we're going to we can clip um, the image collection to the ROI and calculate the mean that's the mean written here and then plot that spatially so I'm just going to bring that in at the bottom mean temperature and I'm going to hit run and because we have this red box marking our geometry I'm just going to untick that so it's not um, masking our temperature map. We can see over here that it's loading a layer called mean temperature. That's because we called it mean temperature and that should come up shortly. Here it comes. There's our map of mean temperature over 18 years. Now Something else to remember is that the stretch here is from 0 to 40 degrees Celsius and I'm using a palette that I've defined from blue through green and yellow to dark orange and red. And you can see that there's not much contrast in here at the moment. If we wait for the layer to load fully, this little cogwheel will appear. We can click that and then Within here, we can apply a one standard deviation stretch 
and shortly you'll see what that effect that has on the range. Um, that'll reduce our range to 19 to 24 degrees. If I apply that, then we'll see a much starker contrast in our temperature map. I'm going to close that. I'm also going to change my base map. At the moment, um, we have the standard Google base map. I'm going to turn on the terrain background. And now I'm going to adjust the opacity of our temperature layer. I'm just going to make that a bit more transparent. And now we can view average temperature over time um, overlaid on the terrain. And we can see that the cooler col colors on these more elevated forested areas and that the warmer areas are more down here in the foothills and the lowlands. Okay, um, so I hope you found that useful. Um, as an exercise, I'd like you to use the script that we've developed here, um, noting that, mo that this product also contains the nighttime temperature. So see if you can re repeat these steps for the nighttime temperature and make two charts, one with the daytime and then one with the nighttime temperature coming up here. And then lastly, also think about how you could modify this to plot, for example, NDVI as a time series over time. So that's all for this afternoon. I'll see you soon for Lab 5 and have a good afternoon. Cheers.